A Brief Account on the Life of Philip Dan's Danforth Armour, published in 1909. Among manufacturers of the 19th century, perhaps no one stands out any more prominently than Philip Danforth Armour. Mr. Armour was born in 1832 on an Oneida County farm in New York. This farm adjoins the property which is now occupied by the Oneida community. He was one of six sons. Philip Armour was always a tireless worker, but it was not until 1841 that he really found it the, ne the necessity and the opportunity for branching out for himself, and he started on, on foot for the new gold fields of the Pacific coast. Walking the entire distance, he arrived a little over six months, uh, being the only one of the party which started to arrive, and, uh, and it was at this period that Philip Danforth Armour did arrive. He demonstrated his physical and mental superiority over his companions in this instance, and he fully demonstrated it in the business world after many times thereafter. De deciding that gold mining was more or less uncertain of results, he began taking contract work for sluices and runs, and in a short time was employing a large number of men. Returning from California five or six years later, he saw for the first time Chicago and Milwaukee. As a choice of location, he selected Milwaukee and went into the business of handling uh, produce. Shortly after he became a, a partner of John Plankin, Plankton, no, Plankinton, excuse me, and during the Civil War, the firm was highly successful and uh, the, very, the business very profitable. It was not until long... It was not long until Mr. Armour saw the advantages of Chicago over Milwaukee, and in 1871, the House of Armour and Company, which is today conducting the largest packing business in the world, was established. The success of Mr. Armour's first venture, the success of the uh, concern of Plankinton and Armour, and later the success of Armour and Company, were all due in large measure to the keen foresight, cool business judgment, and untiring energy of Philip Armour. Armour was a man who made who made men. First he made himself and he and did a, a good job and from that time forward he was making other men and those men who have graduated from under his tutelage into the business world are many of them numbered among the most successful businessmen in the world today. Remember this was done in 1909. With it all he was careful, careful of his, his physical well-being, of his health, and of his earnings. He spared nothing which would make him a better man mentally or physically. He indulged in no excesses, always being the, fit, uh, the first man at the plant in the morning, and with the day's work well done, usually the first man to leave the plant at night. Mr. Armour was no night worker. He rose with the sun and very often much before it uh, did an honest day's work for himself and his associates and left the sluggards to burn the midnight oil while he slept the sleep of the just for he was primarily a just man. Among the men whom Armour started on the road to success are C. H. McDowell, Everett Wilson, Thomas J. Connors, George Robbins. These and dozens of other men have, made, uh, have been made better, bigger, and more successful through association with Philip Danforth Armour. He founded the Armour Institute of Technology and was in reality more of a philanthropist than uh, even his closest friends knew. He started the first refrigeration car line, making possible the placing of all kinds of fruits, flowers, fresh meats, and provisions direct from an iced car into the merchant's refrigerator. Philip Armour sold, always sold 16 ounces for a pound and was never known to resort to sharp practices of any kind in his business dealings. His stereotyped advice to the boys was, be honest, be industrious, be saving, and you'll win. Mr. Armour's life ended in Chicago in January of 1901 at the age of 69 years.